Hello everybody, so I'm uh, at the top of Whitehall. Here we have Trafalgar Square and Nelson's Column. And if you went down on the right there past that red bus, you would eventually get to the House of Parliament and uh, Westminster Abbey. But I want to talk to you about this traffic island, this really busy uh, pedestrian sort of crossway. Obviously you've got um, all the traffic coming around. And I want to talk to you about it because it's a really significant part of the history of this area and of the country. If we were stood here in 1290, we'd be stood in a small village, uh, or a small hamlet on its own, called yeah. Charing. Oh and, um, sorry, completely disconnected to um, you know, the area of uh, Westminster down there where the Abbey is. But we would have witnessed the bringing back of uh, the body of the current Queen, Eleanor of Castile. She was the Queen of Henry the First, uh, sorry, Edward the First and um, son of Henry III. And he, um, he had been married to Eleanor uh, at the age of 50. He was 15, she was 13. And they, so it was a political alliance, the same as uh, every, you know, many royal marriages before and since, but it did turn into a love match. And she, uh, she accompanied him on all his crusades. She had 15 children by him. And, but at the age of 49, she died just outside Lincoln um, in the East Midlands of England, uh, probably of malaria, possibly picked up uh, when they were on crusade. And he was absolutely heartbroken. This was devastating for him. Uh, the body was brought back to, uh, to be buried at Westminster Abbey, which was, uh, so it had been rebuilt by Edward I's father, Henry III, and dedicated to his hero, the Anglo-Saxon king, uh, Edward the Confessor, who'd been made a saint, and his team is, uh, was the first team uh, in Westminster Abbey. And apologies for the noise around here. So he wanted to bring Eleanor's body back, and it had to be brought back in stages, and at each overnight stop, he demanded that a, a cross be erected to her memory. And this was the site of the final, uh, what was referred to then as Eleanor Crosses. There were 12 in all, we only have three surviving, and the one here was the most grandest um, and elaborate, and it was, it was made of marble, and it stood here for 350 years, until the point in the mid-1600s where we had our English Civil Wars. Um, now, we had there the Charles I uh, Royalist Forces versus Oliver Cromwell's Parliamentarian Forces. And the Parliamentarians uh, were against monarchy, they were against hereditary privilege, they were against all that privilege that came with position. Um, and when they, uh, when, uh, effectively, well, they won the, 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 the civil wars at the, uh, the final battle of Worcester, um, and they had captured Charles I and had him executed, well, tried for treason and executed. So then the parliamentarians uh, ruled, and, and England uh, was a republic for... Uh, well, Great Britain was a republic for 11 years. Uh, on this spot, the Eleanor Cross, as with a lot of, sign, uh, sort of signs of, uh, of this privilege, this, this, um, all, all this, that, this that the parliamentarians have stood against, uh, it, was, it was decimated, it was, it was completely destroyed. Um, that's why a lot of England's castles are destroyed and um, you know, uh, anything else that, um, that kind of stood for that that the parliamentarians uh, claim to be against. So the Eleanor Cross that had stood here, behind that lorry, <laughs> the Eleanor Cross that had stood here for 350 years uh, was destroyed. Now on the restoration of the monarchy, when Charles II uh, came, uh, was invited back and, and became king, and the monarchy was, uh, was re-established, he had everyone who had signed the death warrant of his father, Charles I, He'd had them tried for treason and uh, obviously found guilty and executed. Three of those signatories were executed on this spot, the spot where the Eleanor Cross had been destroyed. They were put to death by hang, drawing and quartering, which was an extra special punishment for uh, those who'd been found guilty of treason. This is where they were hung until they were uh, barely alive, but still alive, brought down while they were still breathing, uh, castrated, 
God. Their stomach cut open and their intestines pulled out and burnt in front of their face. And finally, they were cut up into quarters to be sent to the four corners of the country. That was the idea anyway. Um, and if you had a trip advisor for executioners nowadays, or in those days, five stars would have, met, would have given you the executioner that kept his uh, victim alive the longest. This ordeal could go on for hours. And a skilled executioner could keep his victim alive for a very, very long time. So three of the signatories of Charles I's death warrant were killed on this spot, one of whom managed to land a punch on his executioner and hasten his death by totally embarrassing his executioner and uh, yeah landed a punch on him and uh, he decided to he got angry and and killed him there and then so probably quite a wise move on, on the, that man's part but the final bit of the story is the is the uh, sighting of this statue here so this is Charles I on horseback it is a statue that was created, a commission by him, created in his lifetime and successfully hidden throughout the civil wars and throughout the 11 years where we were under parliamentarian uh, rule. It was uh, rediscovered and put on this spot. So the original site of the Ellen Cross, the site where three of the signatories for his death were hung, drawn and quartered. And now he sits there aloft on his horse, looking down Whitehall to the place of his execution outside Banqueting House. 